Hey everyone, this is Lutz and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Raspberry Pi for a headless configuration. So a complete remote system without keyboard or monitor attached to it. So the first thing we got to do before we install anything to our Raspberry is that we go to our Raspberry Pi website and here we go for the software part and we go for downloading the Pi Imager. And then you choose your operational system and download the software and install it. After you install it, you get this little window here where you choose your operational system you want to use in your Raspberry Pi. So if you are new to that, I would highly recommend to, give, to use the recommended version, so the desktop version. And then you choose your SD card which you have connected to your computer. And before you hit the right button, we press that little icon here and configure the operational system we want to write to our SD card. And that's quite important, otherwise we cannot connect remotely to our Raspberry. So the first thing we set is that we set a host name to the Raspberry. You can write here whatever you like. I just use the Raspberry Pi because it's just the name of it. And then you enable SSH, that's important. Then you have to set a username and a password. That's also quite important because the old one with Pi and Raspberry is not available anymore. Afterwards, you configure your wireless LAN according to your settings. And this one here is normally not automatically chosen from your operational system, so be sure that you set the correct country code otherwise the Raspberry Pi cannot log in into your wireless LAN so be sure that you have this one. The location settings are not that important for headless configuration but if you want to use your Raspberry in a hybrid mode that you have sometimes a keyboard connected and sometimes not so set it then you don't have to set it afterwards and the rest here is doesn't matter for our configuration then we say okay and write to SD card and be sure that you have your SD card inside where you can delete everything so then you hit yes and everything is preparing and will write it to the SD card so this will take now a while and I'm back when it's finished so when everything is finished you can put your SD card into your Raspberry Pi and close that imager window and while the Raspberry Pi is booting, you can start already downloading the real VNC client if you did it not before. Then you just go for the website realvnc.com and go for downloads and go for viewer. And then you can download that one that's for free. So that's quite interesting and we will need it afterwards. So when your Raspberry is started, we need to find the address of the Raspberry, otherwise we cannot talk with them. So the way we do this is that we go to the CMD and we type in ping minus four because it's, uh, I don't like IPv6 address. And then we put in Raspberry Pi and that was the reason why we have to configure this host name, otherwise we will not find the Raspberry Pi in our network or we have to take our router to find the Raspberry and we don't want this. So we just give it the ping and then we get the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. So that's quite practical. And if we have the IP address, we can go to our SSH client. You could also use directly the, uh, the CMD by using SSH and your, the username at the IP address. But I don't like this, it's not comfortable for me, so I just uh, use that one here. You can also use PuTTY, it's up to you. So we say here the correct username and say login. And that the first time you have to um, accept the um, encryption. So we say yes, encrypted, and then we log in. Now what we want to do next is just that we want to enable a remote desktop. So we put in raspberry config and then we get this small little window and we say interface and we say a VNC and we say 
yes we want to enable it and then it takes some time depending on USD card and then you say okay that's it finished so then you can close the SSH again and just go to your real VNC client in my case I have already installed it and if you have a new window here you press file new connection and just type in your IP address in my case it's already there because I'm using it a lot and here's the same one we have to accept that it's another encryption ID and we give it the password and the username and then the window starts and at the beginning it's quite ugly so we adapt the settings for the desktop so we open that window and then we go for display and here had less resolution we just use the one we like in my case I like that at most because it's the best one and then we have to reboot the system and yeah this will take now a second so I'm back when it's again here so after the reboot the last thing we're going to do is that we will update our system so we open the console and type and sudo apt update minus yes and um, this is checking for some update availability on the web and this option minus yes gives them the information that you don't have to ask if there's anything new that it's directly installing it and now he said okay there are 82 packages that can be upgraded so then we're going to do this we say sudo apt upgrade and also give him the minus yes option because otherwise you have to enter it for every package so we don't want to do this and yeah then it's starting the update this can now take depending on the version you get on the net before can really take a while so you can do this on your own just leave the raspberry alone and yeah that's it for today that's how to set up a raspberry for a headless usage or you can also use it with a keyboard on a monitor it's quite the same so I hope you like the video if you want to see more of my videos watch my channel here and watch my recommended videos I hope to see you again and enjoy your time goodbye